from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Jack Lynch. And the televising of the Mass is made possible by a contribution from Helen Tutecki in honor or to remember her husband, John. And the, the Mass today is being offered in loving memory of John. And our thanks to Helen for choosing to remember John in this way. And it means a, sincerely a great deal to so many who participate in this Eucharist via television. And so we thank you on their behalf. And now we begin as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We acknowledge that we stand in the presence of our God, a God who has always been gracious, forgiving, and compassionate. And we ask for that gift to be compassionate with others and with ourselves. And we acknowledge our failings and ask to be forgiven and have the grace to forgive. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, and you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Uh, reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Though Christ was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Oh, my 
my people to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Do not forget, do not forget the works of the Lord. When he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the Most High God, their Redeemer. Do not forget, do not forget, But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not true to his covenant. Do not forget. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, we must, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Every year when we come around to celebrate the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, I have memories of the years that I lived in Peru where I encountered a, a tremendous devotion to the cross. When I first arrived in the barrios in the north end of Lima, known as the Pueblos Jovenes or Young Towns, one could see many crosses on the top of the barren hills, so typical of the topography of that area. And on every cross, one was likely to find a pair of dice, either painted or perhaps in cubic form, a, ro a rooster, a ladder, and any, any other item that were painted on them that came out of the passion narratives. Most often groups from the same town or province would have put up that cross in memory of their home before moving to Lima, often in search of a, a better life and better conditions. But every year they would gather to celebrate the Feast of the Cross 
and remember their life and their situation in the Sierra. And when these groups arrived at the parish house, I discovered that they were always paisanos, they knew each other. They were either from the same province, the same town, and that now that the celebrations of the cross were really a rekindling of the memories of their homes in, in the mountainous regions in the Sierra before they immigrated to Lima. And I remember planning the celebrations with them. And for me, they were a time of renewed catechesis, as many of them didn't reflect positively on the religious significance of the crucifixion. And I recall on one occasion when I asked them, one man told me very clearly, he said, Jesus came to teach us how to die. And I said, no, that's not the case. Jesus came to teach us about life and to gift us life. And scripture makes it very clear that salvation comes in two complementary ways, through the cross and through the resurrection. Father Eugene Malley points out our salvation through the cross is referred to as the theology of the cross. Salvation through the resurrection is referred to as the theology of glory. Both are essential to God's plan, and both are part of the same movement of God, of God reaching out and freeing us. The first reading from the Philippians is an eloquent, eloquent summation of St. Paul's theology about who Jesus is and what God is really like. And we notice the stages in the self-emptying of Christ. Paul's hymn about Christ emptying himself and experiencing death on the cross is really also a presentation of a sacramental encounter between a sinful people and a forgiving God. This testimony of divine pardon prompts adoration and a humble confession of Jesus' name. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and through Jesus' death and resurrection, knows there are two kinds of being lifted up. Those who believe in Jesus have eternal life. The crucifixion of God's son could have been the most heinous crime people ever committed. Instead, God chose to use the cross as a sign of divine love, a symbol of humankind's ability to rise above the sin its sinfulness and come to life eternal. The text here today is probably one of the best that we've known. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, John 3:16. I don't know how many times we watch sporting events or other events and we see people with the sign. That's the text that they're referring to. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And every time that we see a cross, whether atop a cathedral spire or hanging from a chain around someone's neck, we're invited to recall and to repeat those inspiring words. The basic theme of the hymn is of, of the Philippians is the humility of Jesus Christ and his will to serve. The Son of God does not cling to his privileges, but instead he empties himself to become one of us. And Paul invites us really to have the same mind as that of Jesus. In other words, to let go of situations, situations of privilege, to carry out our task as witnesses of God's love for all creation. Many people live in, in human conditions, others in profound isolation, while others still in unspeakable deprivation. And to be in solidarity with them is a big part of our call to serve. You know, I want to acknowledge and applaud the women's congregation. There were 66 of them issued a statement on the 1st of, Jan 1st of September, rather, the day of prayer for all of creation. And in part, they write, as women religious, caring for all God's creation is an essential part of our faith. The drastic changes to our climate brought on by the release of greenhouse gases poses the greatest threat to all living being. And so we pray that our constant vocation be to care for all of God's creation and so defend eternal life. I'd like to conclude with a few words from a well-known German theologian, Karl Rahner, who writes, the great and sad mistake of many people is to imagine that those whom death has taken leave us. They don't leave us, they remain. But where are they? In darkness? Not. It is we who are in darkness 
We do not see them, but they do see us. Their eyes, radiant with glory, are fixed upon us. O oh, infinite consolation, though invisible to us, our dead are not absent. They are living near us, transfigured into light, into power, and into love. Let us pray this day that we always can be men and women committed to life, committed to promoting life in all that we do. And so we pray for that grace to be able to empty ourselves as Jesus did, to be able to be always a defender of life. And for that grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those people who join us via television this day. This, many of them are in hospitals, seniors' homes. We ask that God be with them, and particularly with their caregivers, so that we pray for them, pray for peace for them. And for this, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for each and every one of us that we may know the peace of Christ. We may know it in our homes, in our hearts, in everything that we do. And for that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless us, God, By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thank you. And pray, my friends, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And may this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, for all our sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, it's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you place the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth. And the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. And through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. And may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Will those of you at home please join me now in this prayer from sacred scripture. Matthew 11, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your living cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the Spirit of Christ, praising the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. God is love. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Okay.